What is up guys, or graphics in here. In today's video, we're gonna take a look on how to use Google Earth Pro and Photoshop to create this incredible master plan that you can use to present your projects. I just got a random location in London and marked out some blocks to create emphasis in a specific area. So by the end of the video, you will learn a basic approach that you can explore on your own to create amazing graphics. Make sure to subscribe to not miss a new video and follow us at o.graphics on Instagram. There are some great techniques in this video, I hope you like it. Alright, so without further ado, let's jump into the video. First things first, make sure you've got Google Earth Pro installed. You know, the new Google Earth browser is great, but I haven't found an option to export high resolution images from there, so we're gonna stick to the software. Now, once you're in Google Earth Pro, there's one option you've gotta check on the settings to make your life easier in here. So go to Tools, Options, then under Navigation, check this option right here. Do not automatically tilt while zooming. This will ensure you the best orthogonal view possible when zooming in and out of places. Now, all you've gotta do is choose the location from your project. And I'm going to take Central London for this example, right next to Tower Bridge. Next, make sure your image looks as flat as possible, press on the mouse wheel and pull up. Uncheck most of the options, just leave the 3D building active. Actually, it depends on your location, some places look awful without it, so test out before deciding whether you leave it on or off. Take your time to choose your frame, and after you're done, go to File, Save, Save Image. Deactivate all the map options and set the resolution to the highest possible. Hit save image and save it to your folder. The maximum quality is pretty heavy, so it might take a minute or two to export it. Now we can move on to the next part of this tutorial, the Photoshop one. Here I'm gonna show you some smart moves to treat the image as a whole. Alright, so the first thing to do after you import your high resolution image from Google Earth into Photoshop is to add the roads and streets. And this step really depends on how easily you can get a hold of base city drawings. Usually a city has a urbanism department that provides CAD, vector shapes or even GIS maps of the city. So check the website of your local city hall, maybe your university also has it, it's quite common and it helps a lot if you have them ready to go so we can focus on the actual design process. But as a last resource, you can always draw it by hand, which was what I did for this video. I grabbed a round brush and marked out some important roads I could see. I wanted to line off the urban mesh that this area has. But heads up, if you're going to do this by hand for your university project or for a client, make sure to do this step in some sort of CAD or BIM software so you can work with exact measurements. Quick tip here, to fast draw the roads in straight lines, do the following. First, set up your brush. I'm using a round one with the hard edges, white color. Then you can click once with the left mouse and holding shift. Click another time to create straight lines. Alright, so we've got our urban road mesh imported and set it to screen to remove the black background. Also our background layer is locked, so we can set it free by simply double clicking on it and hitting OK. Then make a copy of this layer, Ctrl J, so we have a clean backup layer if needed. Next, let's take these vegetation areas that we can see on the map and separate it into its own layer. So zoom in into a simple area and we're gonna use the magic wand with the color range tool to select the green areas. Right click it and go to color range. On this window, select the color pick that has the plus sign next to it and we need to sample the various types of greens that we've got on this image. So pick some on the grass some on the trees as well, the different types of it. But don't sample the three shadows because it has a similar tone as the building shadows. And we're going to take care of that later. All right, so after you've done a lot of color picks, you can tweak the fuzziness to increase how much selection we're going to have. Somewhere around 30 is good, then hit okay. 
And as you can see, we've got ourselves a pretty nice selection. All we gotta do now is create a new mask on this base layer, and we will automatically add the selection to our mask. Let's rename it to vegetation and duplicate our backup to use as a base layer. We can then create a hue and saturation adjustment layer on top of the base layer to reduce all of its saturation. It is looking good already. And now that we have the vegetation apart from the base layer, we can easily change the green tone. So create a hue and saturation adjustment layer on top. And don't forget to clip it below using Ctrl G. And simply tweak the hue slider to change the color. So I'm gonna go with a slightly greener vegetation. Maybe also reduce some of its saturation and also a touch on the lightness as well. The next step is coloring the river and all the water bodies that we have. So hide all the layers but the base. And using the magic wand, select a part of the river. The selection created with the magic wand isn't that great. But we're going to fix it in a moment. Alright then, below the road layer, create a human saturation adjustment layer. Check the colorize box and choose the desired color. I'm going to turn back on all the other layers so I have the other elements to better choose the tint of my blue. Alright, so I'm gonna leave with this color, but there are a lot of effects to add, so before finishing up the image, I'm going to come back to this adjustment layer. So as I said, the magic one did a rough job with the selection, but since we've got a mask on this blue colorized going on, we can use a brush to refine the selection and that's exactly what I'm doing. So with the hard edge brush, start painting with the mask selected. At this point, I'm also going to add all the other water bodies, so they are in the same hue and saturation adjustment layer, and therefore we will have the same color at the end. I'm using a white color to reveal the effect, and when I need to hide some parts that I maybe went overboard, I just hit X one time to switch between foreground and background color. So therefore I have a black color on my brush, and then I paint it to hide the effects and correct the edges. When doing this type of work, use all the tools at your hand to ease out the process. I used again the magic wand to select bigger parts that have similar tone. Once you finish, right click on the adjustment layer and go to blending options. Then let's add some inner shadows to create some depth to the river. The next step is to create a white fill above the base layer, so we can emphasize certain areas of our master plan. So simply create one layer and paint it fully white. Reduce the opacity to around 20-30%, something like that. And then now is the time that we're gonna take care of the tree shadows that I talked about at the beginning of the video. All we gotta do is go to the mask on the vegetation layer and using any type of brush, reveal the areas needed, just like so. The white fill plus revealing the tree shadows really make those vegetations stand out on the canvas. So make sure to get them all, or at least the parts that are more concentrated. Alright, so now we have emphasized the roads, the river, the vegetation areas. But let's say you wanted to add an emphasis to some city blocks. I don't know, maybe it was a part of your master plan design. So all we gotta do is use our roads as a guide to make a selection. You could do this by hand using the polygonal lasso tool or the pen, doesn't matter. I'm gonna use the road layer plus the magic one to select inside the city blocks. Maybe get some over the side of the river and on the other side as well. Alright, once you've selected, Go to your newly created layer and hit Alt Backspace to paint it with the foreground. I picked white for that. Then after that, go to the blending options and activate the pattern overlay. I chose this uh, diagonal pattern. Make sure to set the blend mode to multiply so we have no white background on this pattern. Change the scale if needed and also the opacity if you feel the need. Next, let's also activate the drop shadow to make these selected areas pop up even more. 
just make sure the shadows are facing the same sun orientation. And to color these areas, I think the easiest way is to create a new layer, clip it below, and paint it with the desired color. I'm gonna go with the red orange color. Doing like this, we ensure that we have the effects applied and we can easily change the color if needed. And now that we have most of the elements placed, we can come back to the river and adjust the colors. We can also do this with any other type of adjustment layer that we have placed. Now on the white field layer, we can create another sort of emphasis. We can mask out some city blocks to do so. So with the magic one and with the help of the road layer, we can select the city blocks. Maybe let's pick these ones right next to the red colored ones. Then once you're finished, go to the white layer and fill with black to remove the effects. And let's also increase the white layer opacity to increase the contrast between those two areas. We are almost finished, but I think we can go a little bit further on the river. So on top of the water layer and clipped below, let's place a paper texture to give a bit more details to the river. I like to use the paper effect, but you can use any type of textures that you like. You can try out different types of blend modes, maybe overlay, multiply, soft light. Then after all of this, let's place a pattern overlay on the river as well. We already have the inner shadow, so activate the pattern overlay. I'm gonna select the squared grid here change the scale and I want white lines not black lines so we can do that using the blend mode divide for that all right that looks good maybe let's reduce some of the opacity and hit ok all right we have finished well almost you know I always like to do a final touch so Control shift alt e all together to create a copy of everything on top then convert it to a smart object and let's apply a camera raw filter. Here, feel free to test out all the options, but I feel like the map lacks a bit of contrast, so that's what I'm gonna go for. And after that, you can also go to the HSL tab to fine tune the colors if needed. Awesome, there you have it. A simple yet incredible master plan illustration straight out of Google Earth and Photoshop. Quick announcement here, we've got a giveaway going on on our Instagram, at all.graphics. We're going to gift 5 lucky ones with a free access to our new post-production course, and also some copies of the scale figures pack. We're gonna draw the winners on this week, on the 28th of May, so if you're into that, go check it out. We're celebrating 50k on YouTube, thank you so much for that. Alright, so if you enjoyed the video and have learned something, don't forget to leave a like, that helps a lot. Subscribe if you haven't already, hit the bell to receive the latest notifications and thanks a lot for watching. That's it for me, I'll see you on the next video.